Okay, Mr. Palmer here. Got a quick little video on virtual machines. Uh, find a little thing in the run of lessons on system software. So, uh, big questions for this video. First of all, what is a virtual machine? Second question is, what are the different ways in which a virtual machine might be used? So, thinking about different scenarios of use. And then, what are the advantages of using a particular a virtual machine in that scenario? So, you can see why we would actually want to use a virtual machine instead of having an actual computer. So the first question obviously is what is virtual um, that needs to be understood before we can think about the concept of a virtual machine so the virtual machine is something that doesn't physically exist okay however you create it by software to appear as if the real resource exists okay so there is no computer there it's the computer inside the computer so what are some examples of using a computer inside a computer so the first one would be virtual operating systems so uh, here's an example of a Linux machine running uh, Mac OS, okay? Um, oh no, it's not. It's a Linux machine running Linux as well on a virtual machine. You can see here in the window in the back. Um, so what's the advantage of this? Basically, you might have some software that might run on a particular version of an operating system that you don't have on, don't want to have a on a physical machine. So you could uh, put um, an operating system on a virtual machine inside your normal OS and run that software within there. So if you have an app, uh, some software that you don't want to have um, making use of certain um, resources that you have available, then you can put it onto a virtual machine. For example, um, we might want to have computers in school for you to do development on, but we don't want you to be messing around with um, uh, system settings. So we can create a virtual box put all the development software you want on it and you can change all the settings on the virtual machine if your heart's content with administrator rights but we can stop that virtual machine from having access to um, the part like partitions on the local C drive um, and network um, access for example so that machine is locked off and it just sits inside a virtual box by itself okay um, another reason for uh, wanting to use uh, virtual machines is this so this is a really early version of um, the Android uh, developer kit and there you can see there's a virtual machine and so you can basically um, create your software and then run it on a virtual machine for testing purposes so it allows the developer to test their software on a range of different um, software and hardware combinations um, you know therefore obviously improving the quality of the product and making it cheaper to, to test your software before deployment. Uh, another advantage is uh, for running intermediate code. Now, what is intermediate code? Basically, machine code um, is limited. So you've written your program, you've got your source code in whatever programming language you've been learning, and then you compile it down into uh, an executable. So you've got a binary which can be uh, run uh, by a particular machine. However, that compile code is limited because it will only run on a CPU which has the same instruction set for which it was compiled for. Obviously, if you want your software to run on different architectures, it needs to be recompiled for that particular um, instruction set on that particular CPU. So you've got a bit of a problem there if you are developing systems that are going to be using a range of different platforms. So if you want to ensure portability so you can use your code on different uh, machines, you need to make use of intermediate code. So intermediate code, basically, um, the compiler doesn't compile down to machine code. It creates what we call bytecode which is more um, efficient representation than source code. So it's not machine code down to the specific instruction set for the CPU, but it's something that's halfway down to machine code. So it's not source code, but it's a more uh, compact representation. Okay, This, however, can't be directly executed because there is no CPU that understands intermediate code. Because if it did understand it, then it would actually not be intermediate code, it would be machine code. All right. So what does that look like actually when you're trying to run in uh, intermediate code? So you've got your CPU, bottom level, okay? Then you've got your operating system on top of it. Within the operating system, you're running a virtual machine. So that virtual machine is pretending to be a CPU that understands the bytecode. So then you stick your intermediate code slash or bytecode, whatever you want to call it, uh, in onto that virtual machine and it will run your code. So the advantage of that basically is that you can take your intermediate code which is your halfway compiled source code, and you can stick it on a range of different computers without having to worry about compiling it for every single hardware um, combination. 
okay, for different CPUs. So that obviously reduced the cost of development because you're not, um, you know, compiling it and testing it for a range of different um, uh, platforms. That although that reduced cost obviously depends upon the um, uh, what do you call it? The, the, you know the the fact that you have to uh, create your virtual machine for that architecture in the first place. Okay, so the knock-on long-term cost is obviously reduced. Uh, an example of that obviously is Java. Um, if you look on the um, uh, Java website, they've got their slogan, which is something like "Compile once, run anywhere," or something like that. Um, I can't remember what it is, but Java compiles down to bytecode, and um, you can actually open up. Um, your compiled Java code and you can look at it and you can actually decipher what's going on in there okay uh, now another reason for uh, using virtual machines is uh, network infrastructure okay so basically if you think about it computers are getting more and more powerful uh, and now basically computers are, can run more than one virtual machine at a time remember that the more virtual machines you run the more of a drain on your system resources there are going to be because each one is going to partition off I put it on your hard drive to pretend that, that it's it, the main disk for that um, virtual machine. It's going to take up some of your CPU clock cycle. It's going to take up your RAM, etc. Okay. However, with your with the kind of computers that we have nowadays, you can run more than one virtual machine at once. All right. So uh, you could basically create virtual servers. So you've got one physical server, right, which have multiple virtual machines running the network operating system on that server. So you got one actual server on the network however your clients around the network are con i think they're connecting to more than one physical server okay because each of those servers then can run specific services for example email um proxy internet access could one of them could be a virtual file server that then will connect to your network storage whatever it is more complicated stuff going on in the background all right now um, that makes it easy to back up because basically each of your servers are just kind of like virtual data um they basically just partitions on on the hard disk of uh, your server okay it's easy to duplicate so if something goes wrong uh you can basically um uh you know just copy that section that partition and stick it somewhere else and run it okay it's easy for you to balance your load because if one server starts um needing uh taking up uh more resources has as a high demand on the network you can shift uh, virtual servers from one physical machine to another physical machine in your farm to balance the load across the network. And then um, it's easy for you to recover from hardware failure because you just uh, stick your backup uh, on, onto another physical server, boot up your virtual server, and off you go. All right. So um, you're mitigating the, you know, the risk here um, you know, when things could potentially go wrong on your network. So you should be able to now answer what is a virtual machine. You should be able to think about different ways in which a virtual machine should be used and what the advantages of using a virtual machine are in that scenario. Thank you very much and watch out for the next video.